I think The Princess and the Cabbie is a pretty important film. It deals with a topic that certainly in 1981, when this was released, I feel like there was limited understanding. But even now, I think it's one that's definitely worth watching. This is directed by Glenn Jordan. It's written by Edward Pomerantz, and it stars Valerie Bartonelli as Joanna and Robert Desiderio as Joe. We also have Shelley Long appearing in this, a reasonable amount. And as a Shelley Long fan, this is exactly why I watched the film. As a Shelley Long fan, I'm happy with what she brings to it. But the main focus is on Joanna and Joe. And Joanna is in a cab, driven by Joe, and she's carrying a book with her. And Joe strikes up a conversation about the book, about Shakespeare. And it's very clear that Joe is very passionate about the literary world. We learn that he's actually a writer, although he's not necessarily doing a lot of writing at the moment. And I won't say exactly how it happens. I won't go into all of the details, but everything flows well and makes sense. He ends up learning that Joanna is actually dyslexic. And throughout the film, he helps her to understand this better, understand herself particularly because her father told her something about herself. I won't say exactly what he said. I will let the shock factor happen if you watch the film. But her father's attitude was horrendous. And this had a knock-on effect on Joanna's own self-esteem and, and how she felt about herself, not just with her abilities to read, but as a person and kind of what that meant for her position in the world and thinking of herself as being less than others. And this is certainly the interpretation I got of the character. She doesn't think very highly of herself at all. And Joe is definitely a big help with this. And he helps her to start to learn to read. And the scenes in particular where she's learning to read uh, are so moving and so well done. Joe is very patient. He has some, what I think are effective techniques in helping her recognize words and associating different letters with different sounds. And he injects some comedy in there as well to make things a little bit lighter so that Joanna doesn't feel disheartened when things are maybe not going as smoothly as she would like. And I think those approaches, obviously I'm not a professional, I've never worked with dyslexic people. I don't know what the techniques are. If you are somebody helping somebody with dyslexia, I'm sure there are very specific techniques that can help. But just watching this as somebody with no direct experience with dyslexia, I I feel like these techniques seem quite beneficial, not just with dyslexia, but with anybody who's learning to read, young children or anybody. I feel like some of the techniques in here are, are very reassuring. It's a very positive approach. And I think that that's really beneficial. But I think more importantly, it's helping to show that even if you have dyslexia, it doesn't mean you're incapable of doing things. And that's absolutely how Joanna felt. And largely, I think, because of her father. And I don't think her father had any ill intent, but his words had really stuck with her. And his approach to Joanna's life and what he allowed her to do definitely seemed to have a strong negative effect on the way she viewed herself. And if the film provides... Two important lessons. The first is that there are ways of approaching reading if you have dyslexia. I know there are kind of varying degrees of dyslexia, but there are things that can be tried, as we see in the film here. But I think maybe even more importantly is the attitudes towards people with dyslexia. And as I said, this was in 1981, where I feel like understanding was not where it is today. So certainly it kind of slightly feels like a product of its time. I f well, I was going to say I feel like no parent would have the same response now as Joanna's father did, but I could be wrong about that. I, I hope I'm not wrong. I hope that nobody would treat Joanna or speak to Joanna the way her father did today, but you never know. But either way, I think it helps to, to raise a lot of really good points and we have a, a really great narrative, a really nice narrative structure. The pacing is really good. Joe and Joanna are both very, very likable characters, and that definitely worked very well. The other characters we meet along the way all help to add something as well. It's maybe not the most engaging film. There are times when it felt a little bit slow, a little bit like I wanted something different to happen. But in general, I found it to be a pleasant narrative, raising some really important points and definitely really important in 1981. But I think even today, this is a film that provides some great education and I think it could be really uplifting for anybody who is in a similar situation to Joanna, could maybe provide some comfort, reassurance, maybe some hope 
Indeed, if you have been in Joanna's position and you've watched this film, I'd love to know what your response to it was. Is it relatable? Is it maybe not an accurate portrayal based on your own experiences? I'd be very keen to, to learn more about that. But judging it from my perspective, I thought that The Princess and the Cabbie was a decent film with some really important questions being tackled here. And if it sounds like it would appeal to you, then I'd say it's definitely worth watching.